You know, when you watch an esports game, you will see a few things different than a standard game, obviously the player's skill, but one thing that has always fascinated me was that the smallest things begin to make a huge difference. It begins to tip the scales and the teams that can capitalize on it begin to win. And today, we have something like that. Even though the game is barely out of closed beta, we already have quite a few clans being formed. And today we have something very close to that. And I would like to demonstrate how the smallest thing can make a big difference. So let's begin. Let's first introduce the sides. On the blue side, we have got the Legion 13 team, Sansu Echo, Red Duke, uh, the Dark Dust, and myself, Arklanon, as well as quite a few other and a fairly decent, uh, decent people. We've got some cavalry, some heavy infantry uh, in the southern, in the middle flank, and in the south towards the city. We have got the spears and the cavalry going in, an interesting choice. And in the red team, we have got javelins and uh, infantry going into the city. Some uh, light cavalry, very good. And uh, some archers going into the city. They do have one uh, disconnected player, however. In the middle, they've got heavy infantry, uh, some cavalry. It seems like equally matched until you see this. We have got the red team has two artillery heavily incentivizing them to camp their position and to just uh, shoot until the, until the opposing team relents. However, there is one caveat when it comes to artillery. They require vision in order to be able to see where they're shooting, otherwise they're going to be shooting in the blind. So, let's see how that vision begins to take shape. So, Kurgan King... Uh, is going in. Oh, let me introduce the other team as well. We have got the Sons of Zeus, um, Jackie Fish, uh, another uh, YouTuber, the infamous Pelasgos, of course, Hell Sansu, and their uh, latest friend, Kurgan King, also a pretty good player, as you are about to find out. Uh, and he rushes, just like uh, the Light Cavalry should do, rushes to the tower, giving wish vision to his team, he gave a brief vision and then scouted the enemy. Right now, they're able to see this whole area. On the other hand, the Miltiades Spears of Echo come in and push out that cavalry. Very interesting uh, rock, paper, scissors going on here. I would like to point out the strategic situation of this um, encounter right here. Uh, while the cavalry is a lot faster, you would expect them to uh, capture it. However, Miltiades Spears, with all of their speed buffs, are able to almost keep up and are better for holding this position because them being Spears, they heavily counter uh, the cavalry, but the engagement is not over yet. Pelasgos' Tier 8 uh, archers are coming in, and because Miltiades does not have any raised shield abilities, just look at this damage that he is receiving here. A little over half of his health he received, and the cavalry has to retreat as well. So now the blue team is taking position uh, behind these uh, behind these trees within these uh, within these bushes, which are not very effective because this flag is going to reveal them. Now, on the city, we have got the blue team pushing, and it looks like the teams have went more towards the middle flank rather than the city. We've got these javelins uh, headed towards the base. It doesn't seem like either of the teams have any elephants, which is uh, pretty rare to see these days. Now, the artillery has seen Echo's, uh, Echo's spears, so now they're coming in. And they're uh, making him pay for being seen right here. That's at least 20% of his health gone right there. So with uh, artillery advantage being completely one-sided, it gives them a pretty big incentive to uh, camp that position. But the big advantage that the blue team has is the vision. They have captured this tower, allowing them to push forward with these flanks. Red Duke is... Uh, is scouting it's southern in the woods holding this area and also we are able to see these uh, legionaries over here which can turn the battle but Red Duke has successfully baited them in 
and they are waiting. We have a bit of an archer duel going on. The multi 80s spears are being shot at. And these cavalry, there's a, some fire exchange going on. And these war dogs come in and tear these legionaries apart. They come in and try to chase these javelinmen over here. Javelinmen leave caltrops and keep running away. They are routed, but these... Uh, but these infant infantry have been slowed down, and because they're in the woods, they're even slower right now. And boom! One artillery shot takes two bars of health, two-fifths of the health of these javelins. Additional shots go in, do minor damage, but with the, all the units in this area gone, they have completely lost vision of this area, uh, leaving the blue team with, uh, with the metal flank. Very intense, but they still have the strategic advantage. They still have the artillery, so they can turn this battle around. Echo is uh, running around trying to find a weakness within their lines with his multi 80 spears. He's just chasing this cavalry. He doesn't give a damn. He has engaged Jackie Fish's Triarii, which are a tier 7 Roman, uh, tier 7 Roman spears that are a premium unit. And boom! It looks like Sun Tzu has just hit Dark Dust's... Um, Dark Dust's archers doing considerable damage. However, in the process, sacrifices his cavalry, but he has activated his Oath of Perseverance. However, there is one caveat here. Under normal circumstances, he would be able to hold here for long. But the effect of these spears, as well as Veni... Veni makes a huge difference, 50% melee attack and 50% melee defense wipes out that cavalry off the battlefield, giving the cavalry advantage to Red Duke. Now he's able to capture the planes, and now the blue team cannot simply cannot afford to lose any time, come close to the critical range, the range where uh, the artillery is not able to shoot. And now they are able to shoot the artillery instead. The artillery piece, however, is blocking the shots. So they're receiving minor damage. Seeing this, Dark Dust, uh, Dark Dust engages with uh, Pelasgos' archers. And the Triarii are holding the lines right here. The most experienced lines of the Republican era... But because the dogs can go under phalanx, they still do considerable damage. It looks like the blue team's city forces are managing to cap the base. Forcing them to either abandon this position. Oh, this position I remember well. So we've got these uh, two javelins over here fighting against this one cavalry. In the meanwhile, the artillery keeps shooting their base in order to decap. So now we've got some uh, cavalry on cavalry action going on. Roman cavalry against the barbarian cavalry. They are able to hold one another for a while. And we've got another cavalry trying to charge. But boom, the Roman cavalry intercepts in the last second. The blue team keeps pushing and tries to probe around into that into that uh, blob over here. And they have managed to take out one of their artillery pieces. The blue team is coming in close, but these javelins are not doing much good over here. And the barbarian cavalry... One of the units have been destroyed and the other ones have been repelled back, allowing the allowing the blue team to push in closer. These Triarii are barely wounded, but look at this. We've got the Javelins coming here. The red team decided to push back to prevent themselves from getting capped. It's a very delicate balance that they have going on here. These Dachian warbands is surely gonna do considerable damage to these Triarii. They have activated their Defiance, which gives them uh, the ability to, well, not die, and 50% weapon damage and 50% melee attack. Considerable bonus. The red team is being flanked uh, on both sides, and with the strategic point being, being right here, Korgan King keeps on decapping, preventing the game from ending early. However, the red team has finally lost their uh, their artillery, giving them no reason to camp here whatsoever. And now we have a bit of an archer duel going on right here. Tier 8 archers versus tier 7 archers. with uh, So two tier 8 archers versus three tier 7 archers. Very interesting matchup. 
got a lot of triarii here i believe like four triarii holding the lines but they're not able to do anything against these javelins as well as these uh, uh these war dogs so it looks like the light uh, the light infantry is making a quick work of these archers right here the cavalry comes in as well to to finish to do the finishing blow upon these and another charge to finish up with those archers looks like the blue team has now a very decisive advantage the kurgan king here keeps on decapping despite these being uh, uh archers he keeps throwing in his uh, scorched earth he's playing as vercingetorix which is a very good commander while i would prefer arminius uh, Vercingetorix definitely has his job as the light cavalry, both for scouting uh, and uh, harassing the enemy with his scorched earth. The defiance cannot be forgotten, of course. So we have the blue team, which has uh, tore a hole through the lines. I mean, look at all these corpses. They tore a hole through the artillery hill and are now pushing towards the last bastion of the red team. And now the red team has only their last units left, their last triarii left. The blue team is starting to cap. Let's speed things up. Well, now with the battle over, I would like to have a quick recap over there and thank both of our players. They, I believe that both sides played very well. Uh, and... Uh, so here we saw the reason for that was, one of the biggest reasons for that at least, was the engagement at the tower. The line of sight advantage, I believe, is what gave blue team the victory at that point. The refusal to give away that tower allowed them to push, allowed them to take out that artillery, because if they went back, they would have been shot to death by that artillery. And uh, they would be fighting defensively and against the skirmisher disadvantage that would not have worked. So good game for both sides and we'll see you next time.